Good evening. This is CTV News for Tuesday, June 23rd. I'm Patricia Villa. And I'm Denise Douglas. Thank you so much for joining us. The National Transportation Safety Board opened two days of hearings in the district today. It's part of the agency's investigation into the January 12th smoke incident that claimed one life and injured dozens of others. Byron Scott has the details. We were out there every twice a week. Day one of the NTSB hearing centered on the transit system's infrastructure. We do monthly preventive maintenance. Witnesses from WMATA and the district's Office of Unified Communications testified for most of the morning. One revelation, over the last year, the number of smoke incidents in the tunnels has increased. Um, I think the last number I saw so far for this year was 200 some, um, which is an increase over previous years. I do know that. Um, I believe it's attributed to um, an increase in awareness of reporting incidents, uh, sparking insulators, smoke, any fire. The hearings are aimed at determining the cause of that January 12th smoke incident that claimed one life and injured dozens of others. There was also testimony about water leaking into the tunnels and whether that may have played a role in the event. Witnesses were shown this infrared video of the area where the crash happened. It was recorded last year. The dark blue splotches indicate the presence of water. The presence of water in a tunnel, it does not indicate a problem. Um, again, all our tunnels leak. Some of our tunnels are equipped to what's called HPRs, which are hydrostatic pressure release that allow water to reach into the tunnel. For NTSB Chairman Christopher Hart, the events of the day indicate a lack of coordinated effort. That's the, the reason I asked the question about who knows where the smoke is, who knows where the trains are, who knows where the fans are. Is there any single person who knows all that to know what to do to keep the smoke out of the train? And that's that to me, the answer to that is not yet. We're still learning on that. And they talked about a training program to increase the capability to know that. Now the hearings continue tomorrow and at some point the NTSB will announce its recommendations. Also at some point the NTSB will announce the findings into the cause of that January 12th smoke incident. But that's not expected until early next year. In the district, Byron Scott, CTV News. Byron tells us that the hearings continue tomorrow. As we've reported in the past, Prince George's passed a fiscal year 2016 budget last month after much haggling between the two branches of government. Portions were vetoed by the county executive and then overridden by the county council. This morning, the council took action by voting on legislation to actually levy the taxes they passed, something that's required by the county charter. Separate laws were passed to increase tax, tax rates for telecommunications, recordations, as well as hotel and motel taxes. The Maryland Hotel and Lodging Association has not opposed the concept of a room occupancy tax, but we do have very serious concerns that none of the revenue from this tax and the tax increase in the, in the rate will go to tourism promotion. I don't, I don't personally have any qualms whatsoever about increasing the hotel tax rate from 5 to 7 percent. Um, surrounding counties are all at 7 or above. Baltimore City's at 9.5 and, and D.C.'s at 14.5. And, um, and, and this rate hasn't gone up since July 1st of 1995. So we're talking exactly 20 years ago was the last time we raised the rate. Now, two of the measures passed unanimously. Lehman was one of the two lawmakers to vote against the bill to raise the telecommunications tax. Well, thoughts and prayers are pouring in from political figures across Maryland for Governor Larry Hogan as he begins his battle with cancer. In a press conference yesterday, the head of state announced that he has been diagnosed with an aggressive form of B-cell non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. County Executive Rashern Baker released a statement saying that he wants the governor to know that Prince Georgians are behind him and will cheer him on until he is cancer free. Council Chair Mel Franklin says he and other members are looking forward to the good news of Hogan's strong recovery. All six Baltimore police officers charged in the death of Freddie Gray pled not guilty. This according to a statement released this week in which Baltimore City State's Attorney Marilyn Mosby says prosecutors look forward to trying the case. Gray died April 19th, a week after suffering a severe spinal cord injury in police custody. The trial is scheduled for October 13th. The six officers face charges ranging from second degree assault to second degree depraved murder, uh, depraved heart murder. 
In response to the death of Freddie Gray and the riots that followed, the Maryland General Assembly began an in-depth review of policing standards and practices throughout the state. Today, a joint Senate House committee held a second in a series of hearings in Annapolis. The Public Safety and Policing Work Group heard testimony from several law enforcement agencies on their recruitment and hiring practices. Maryland State Police troopers told lawmakers that while they have stepped up efforts to improve minority recruitment, there are a number of challenges ahead of them. I have identified several areas that we could improve upon. Um, one of those areas is we're losing a lot of uh, potential candidates uh, at the early stages, sometime between high school and um, 21. Um, our candidates, uh, our applicants, are engaged in some type of activity that might that disqualifies them from our process. Facts are that in most jurisdictions across the state, uh, the average uh, percentage of African Americans exceeds the average percentage of African Americans in the police departments. And uh, we want to know why that is uh, and if it can be fixed, if there's something that we can do to fix it. I don't know. Uh, but clearly, uh, diversity we think is a good thing. And um, if we can increase it in some way, we will look into ways to do that. We want to be able to pass a comprehensive uh, piece of legislation that will be accepted by everybody in the state, not just for. Uh, Baltimore uh, police agencies. So. The committee plans to conduct a town hall style public meeting July 23rd in Annapolis where citizens will have an opportunity to speak about policing. Well, you are watching CTV News, and I'm Denise Douglas. And I'm Patricia Vallon. Up